Well, hello, this is Peter Combs from bitamount.com and PL Combs Asian Art, Gloucester, Massachusetts. And today is Friday, September 22nd, 2017. And we'll take a look at uh, last week's auction results on eBay. Stick around, there were some interesting things. And they did very well. Uh, some uh, r rather unusual and good quality things have been turning up in the last uh, couple of weeks now that summer's over. Um, here's last week's uh, newsletter. We had a lot in there. It was a pretty full newsletter of uh, nice things. There's still some things on there that haven't closed yet, and we'll update it uh, later on today. There's some things closing tomorrow, Saturday, and Sunday. Um, we also did a video this week, uh, a look back at the prices on the Christie's sale, uh, two of the sales that happened last week, the uh, fine Asian works of art, fine Chinese works of art, and uh, the Marchant auction which was a sale that uh, the, the Marchant family did a catalog of their own with Christie's and uh, put up about 50 lots. They did, they did quite well. And uh, we, we did a review of those. And uh, just another quick reminder, uh, our friend Carlo Santi over in Susana, Italy, his sale is coming up in about a week. This is their second sale. Carlo's trying to help them build up their Asian department, which they didn't have before. So uh, they have some nice things. You can go to visit them on their site. Uh, you can see their catalog on our site under dealers and auctioneers. And now on to, this, on to uh, last week's auction results. We, had, we came across this, and I, I hope, I, I think a lot of people noticed it, but uh, uh, understand what this was. This was an extremely rare Chinese export plate, about eight inches wide, uh, depicting the Hongs of, uh, in China uh, during the China trade period. And this is often how they were done in paintings and uh, around 1820. And here is a uh, painting from that period on oil, obviously an oil canvas painting, that the uh, plate was modeled after. Uh, the same, same general scene, same building, so forth, um, but it was put on porcelain. And uh, this is a highly desirable subject matter for uh, Chinese export collectors. Uh, uh, it's the kind of thing you'll see at the PBD Essex Museum. And they also did them on punch bowls on occasion, but not on plates very often. And it brought $3,453, which was a good price for that. It was quite a thing, and I don't think anybody overpaid. It's, it's a bit of a rarity. Nice thing. And uh, then there was this big vase. Uh, this was a monstrous vase. It was 38 inches tall. It doesn't really look it in the picture. It's even crooked in the picture. Um, always check the dimensions on things when you look at vases um, because it's surprising um, uh, sometimes how, uh, how big they are. Here's the bottom of it. It was lamp, but they didn't drill it, which, which helped the price. Um, here it is. Here's the bottom. They, they had a fitted, fitted lamp top. There's the wire going outside. Thank you very much for not drilling it. Um, and here's a, a figural scene. Also, always check to make sure if you see a, va a vase that you think is that it appears to have been lamped, sometimes they don't drill them. And the vase, you just pop the top off if you want the vase back to, back to its usual self. Here's another view of it. And the vase did very well. It brought $3,650. But it's a 38-inch vase. You have to understand that once you get over 30 inches in Chinese porcelain, prices jump up. Uh, so nobody overpaid for this. That was a perfectly fair price. That's a big vase. And uh, there was this tile. This was a wonderful tile. Uh, there are a lot of these that turn up, and some of them are sort of ho-hum. But if you took them a few minutes to look at this one, the detail, uh, quality of, the, of, the, of the, all the little details was really excellent. Um, let's see if we can get another shot. There it is. Uh, notice the way the willow trees are done. Lots of use of green, the, the, the boats, the waves, all the fine little detail. Uh, really made this an unusual one. There's the back of it. Very typical uh, early 19th century tile. Excellent quality. And uh, a lot of people noticed it. It did quite well. It brought $5,211. But, uh, and I like the frame. It had, it had what looks to be an original, if not old, just an old frame. Okay? But very good. And our friend over in, in, uh, in uh, France, Scrap Dixon, Tony, had this up, this rather nice winged bird, winged phoenix, uh, water dropper, Ming Dynasty. Uh, loved the surface on this, loved the color. Uh, I, I don't have any interest at all in bronzes that don't have their original surfaces. Um, if it's been cleaned or polished, they make my eyes glaze over. Um, but I love the surface on this. Look at the bottom of this thing. God, it's grungy and beautiful. And uh, here's the interior. Uh, looks like it's probably missing a, a lid uh, of some kind. Uh, there it is. You have these, uh, these, the, the figure, the, the bird figure, with another bird on top of them, uh, serving as the legs. 
a wonderful piece and about twelve hundred dollars which i think is a very reasonable price for a good good pure piece like that nice example he gets good things and then we had this this was great um we don't do a lot with chinese furniture because we don't see a lot of good chinese furniture on ebay but this was an excellent chinese export uh table um here's the top of it and what made this so unusual was it's a very well done top quality uh, uh, uh figural scene rose medallion or rose mandarin scene but notice the gilding and the enamels with the condition they're in. I've seen a lot of these tables over the years, and usually by the time that, you know, by now, after 200, almost 200 years, all the enamels, there's a lot of wear on the top of it, and the enamels are chipped from, from, from being used. Uh, this piece looks pristine, and all of the gilding seems to be intact, or 99% of it, um, which is often cleaned off, because cleaning ladies used to use a lot of ammonia to clean things, and ammonia will strip gilding off of a plate very quickly. Uh, but look at the quality of that work. Look at the, gild the fine gilding work all up in here. Just excellent. And the table did very well. Oh, also it has a, has a, 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 a deeply carved standard on the bottom with a dragon, no less. All right, there it is. Uh, just absolute excellent quality. And about $2,550, which is not at all unreasonable for this table, even with a $440 shipping tag to the U.S., Shipping a table is expensive, and it's got to be done right, or it will get broken. But uh, that was a terrific example. And then there was this. This was a really good um, Chinese export uh, tankard, circa 1850, by Sun Xing. Uh, his work, his silver, tended to be heavy, uh, nice and thick. Notice how thick it is around here at the top. It's got a vermeil liner in it, vermeil interior. Really superb work, really superb. Um, and this, this quality of Chinese silver has become um, harder and harder to find. Uh, and is this, this one brought $1,913, but uh, a really uh, fine example, uh, just excellent. And then there was the, uh, the rank badge. I'm a, I, as you know, I, I like rank badges. Uh, I, I think they're, they're like little paintings, and th this, is, this is a good one. I like the color. The color of the uh, silk is excellent. It's, it's very mellow. Um, the, the needlework on it is uh, quite quite fine, as you can see, a lot of blind, what they refer to as blind stitching. They used to refer to this as the forbidden stitch. So it's, it's sort of a dealer myth. Uh, there's no, there was no such thing as a forbidden stitch, um, but they, they use it anyway. It got traction. Um, and notice the bats, and then you have the, the peaches up here. See the peaches? You look at this in detail, there's a lot going on. And here's the, uh, the sun coming through, and then more bats and clouds so forth and it brought uh, $1,135 it did it did well it was but, but well worth it nice antique and um, then we had this Kesey panel this was I think the, one of the good buys of the week Kesey panels are highly desirable and this is a 19th century one maybe a late 18th century one even um, and quite un, uh, quite unusual with, the, with all these figures going around the outside the boys parading around the outside of it and it's split into three sections um, and you have an immortal in this one meeting other immortals and you have these figures on a boat um, It looks like it might have a little split here or a pole or something. I don't I couldn't tell but uh, a, a very good panel and uh, It only went for four hundred dollars three hundred ninety three dollars uh, Generally these these do very well. I've seen in you know single ones with just one scene not with all that going on bring six eight hundred So I think that was a good buy and then there was this very nice big armorial plate. Originally, it had been sold by Sotheby's as superb, uh, it's a Chinlung period, superb underglazed blue decoration with a double armorial uh, crests on it. Uh, it might have been made for a wedding or something uh, where, they would off, where they would use uh, both family crests on it, some sort of symbolism. And a uh, uh, nice overall piece, a little bit of wear. Uh, but it brought $511, and that was not an overpayment. Um, those are that's quite unusual. Think about when the last time you saw a double armorial piece. And this may have been the, the biggest bargain of the week um, from what I could see of it. I put this in the newsletter. We, the, you don't see a lot of great stone rubbings. This is a Buddhist stone rubbing, and it appears to be a good old one, 18th century or earlier. Uh, here is the upper left, the calligraphy, the colophons, and all that. And then another row of script down the side. Uh, this little scene here. And if you go and look it up on, on, uh, on Google and you go to look at Christie's auction results for Buddhist stone rubbings, this was a big one. It was uh, 44 inches long. So it was a nice big one. Um, you're going to see what these can bring. 
And this went for, get this, $91. That was the bargain of the week. Uh, these are, I, I, I thought it would bring in the thousands, to be honest with you. So at any rate, stone rubbings, you got to study up on them. They do turn up and they are you have a big collector market. Uh, this was the, uh, the transitional period jar that uh, Arthur Potts had. Uh, a very nice one. I like I like these in particular when they have figures and people on them. This one is a is a, a, a lady riding a Kieran with a, a fellow behind her with a banner. Uh, I love these with all the activity on them. Here are more bannermen coming along behind, and uh, had a little hairline in the mouth, but other than that, it was a nice jar. There it is, and uh, there he points out the hairline. He's good about that, and uh, it brought uh, seventeen hundred ninety six dollars. It was about eight inches tall. Not an unreasonable price one of this quality uh, these are worth more than the ones that just have flowers on them for example you know they show peonies nobody you know not unusual that one was a bit more unusual and then we had this piece this was the uh, uh, underglazed blue late 19th century jar nice quality I love the way the dragon here mirrored the baby dragon in relief up above almost identical body positioning. Uh, you've seen these before. Typically they're in yellow, which is the more common color with the sort of familial June ground on them. Um, but this one was done in blue, a, a nice soft blue. Here's the look at the foot. Good little iron oxide line around it and that rounded uh, late 19th century foot. Often this pattern is associated with the uh, Empress Dowager's pattern, uh, Sixi. And at um, uh, any rate, this brought $1,435, um, not a bad price at all for that. And then there was this. This was a very unusual, and, and Christie's had one of these, a very similar piece, these sort of little flying saucer looking uh, inkwells, a couple of years ago, as I recall. A nice, deep, crackled celadon ground, and it's got this dried sort of faux bronze. It's, it's porcelain, but it looks like it's, it's left dry to, to simulate porcelain around the top with a wave and this modified sort of Greek key border on it. Here's a look at the inside of it. Good looking uh, surface on this. Um, here's another shot of it. Again, that dried look with this browning in, uh, around the rim and the dressing. There's the bottom of it. Nice 18th century uh, example. And it uh, got a lot of attention. It, it did just fine. It brought $2,584. But for a scholar's uh, collector, scholar's table collector, I think it was a, a, a wise purchase for someone. And that was also Arthur Potts. He had a big week last week. And then we had this, this large Famille Rose um, uh, jar, 19th century jar. Quite a, a sort of a, a, an unusual type. Um, you see these uh, sometimes in cuspidors, which is a close cousin to this. Uh, but this was a nice big piece, and it was fairly large. I think the guy put the dimensions in it. was like 80 centimeters or 82 centimeters around. So it's a couple of feet around. So it was a good-sized pot. And... Uh, nice quality all the way around there's the bottom of it very typical mid 19th century work and uh it brought 701 dollars um so there seems to be some interest in that it may have been because it was a sort of a, a peculiar form people like odd forms and then arthur also had this he had, he had a number of good ming bowls this week and uh this this was one a nice Juan lee bowl with uh the foo lion and then you have this the ball silk ball chasing the silk ball around there's the interior of it. It had a couple of rim cracks. It had a, it had a crack on this side and a crack on that side. Um, and then you have this spinning wave pattern center, which you do see on these. Uh, there's another view of it. There's the foot, very, very typical Ming foot. And uh, little bits of imperfections underneath from the kiln. And uh, there's another look at it. And uh, this one still, with the, with the cracks on it, still did pretty well. It had a chip, too. Still brought $781, not bad. But the, the foo lions were particularly well done. It was a rather attractive piece. And this was sort of a mystery to me. The guy called this Republican period, and I don't agree with him. I, I think this was probably a nice 19th century um, uh, Mayping form snuff bottle. Uh, the underglaze red on it was good and clear, a nice underglaze blue. Um, I did take a look at the base of it uh, and some other pictures that he had up, and it looked fine to me. And uh, there it is. There's the foot. He's got the stepped foot which you typically don't see on 20th century stuff bottles, from what I remember. Yeah, I'm getting older, though, so I might have forgotten one. At any rate, it's, uh, it brought $565. So I, I, I think the uh, people looking at it also thought it was 19th century, not Republic. And this was one of, another one of the Chinese export rarities that turned up this week. This is probably a Yong Chen period uh, plate uh, with a very uh, uh, wonderful uh, central scene within this sort of lotus border of a woman playing a chin 
and um, next to a, uh, a bookcase uh, filled with books and uh, jade tablets, and you have this coup form vase with peacock feathers and coral coming out of it. Quite an elegant scene in this sort of Sopra Bianco uh, 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 trim, and uh, very nice quality. There's the overall shot of the plate. Looked like about an eight-inch plate, and it did well. It brought $1,652. Uh, that again, that's uh, that's a, a rare type of export, uh, quite quite good looking. And this again, this was another I think a really terrific buy. Uh, I, I, I I I I like it when people get great buys. This was a great buy. This was an 18 inch charger. As I say many times, always check the diameters and always leave a bid. Always leave a bid if you see something, because uh, you never know things do go through the cracks. This was an 18-inch uh, 19th century cloisonne charger with a very unusual central scene of circling um, uh, cranes and uh, just among, among flowers and, and cloud-like devices. And then an outer rim with this sort of sharp cavetto here and this outer rim of butterflies and flowers. And it had gilding on it. It had some nice gilding on the, on the metal. And uh, here's the back of it, good-looking back, uh, nice, and, nice and honest looking. There's the foot rim to it. And uh, get this, it, it went for two hundred and fifty-one dollars, two hundred and fifty bucks. Uh, that is short money for this. It should have brought probably seven hundred to eleven hundred dollars. So somebody got a terrific buy. If you like cloisonne and you see a piece of it, drop a bid on it. Don't let it slip through on you. All right. And uh, oh, this was this other piece. Now, I mentioned a few weeks ago. I, I, I've always been sort of a fan of of, of, of very good quality pewter. This is one of the best pieces of pewter that's been on eBay. I, there was a very good piece a couple of weeks ago. This one's even better, I think. And it's a very unusual, it's a, it's a tea caddy set, obviously, with, a, with, a, with what looks like a European figure riding on a Kieran, and he's got this ivory standard attached to his hand. Maybe he lost his hand and somebody added it, I don't know. But uh, here's the, uh, here's the, no, that's okay. Here's, here it is, and they took the covers off. You can see the Fu Lion handles used to uh, seal the, the uh, tea caddies. And this was a big piece. It was um, about 14 inches wide. Uh, so it was a nice big table object. Very, very fine quality. Uh, the quality of this was really exceptional. I mentioned that there is some, there is some great quality uh, 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 pewter done. This is one of them. It's all, it was also signed and sealed on the bottom. A lot of people liked it. It brought $3,386 but I don't think they overpaid for it at all. I think that's a wonderful object. If you like antiques and, 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 and interesting things, that, I think that's a, that's a real conversation piece. And uh, then there was this piece of Japanese uh, uh, cloisonne. We don't do a lot with Japanese cloisonne because we don't see a lot of it on here that we think is worth talking about. But this one was excellent. It was very pretty. It was unsigned, but it was very much in the manner of, of work by people like Namakawa Yatsuyuki uh, with these uh, beautiful birds on the pine on the pine branches or on the vines with oh they're on wisteria vines and here are the wisteria flowers coming down uh good quality there's a picture of the bottom um but excellent all the way around it was in good condition and without a signature it still brought 855 dollars which is which is a pretty good price for a, probably a three inch jar but nice piece of cloisonne i liked it and there was another snuff bottle that came up last week and this one was underglazed blue and red uh, but a good clear red. This was a nicely potted uh, example. It tapers in slightly, and it's got a very gentle slope up to the uh, up to the mouth. Here's another shot of it. A lot of figures, heavily heavily figured, uh, which is always good with a snuff bottle. There's another. You have some uh, uh, dignitaries or immortals coming in, and here's the bottom of it. And they used a little bit of the iron red here. And iron red, as you know, the copper oxide when it fires. It sometimes will turn this greenish color, and that's what that is. That's underglazed red that sort of turned green um, on, in the kiln, and there it is. And this this did quite well. About eleven hundred, about a thousand and eighty-four dollars. And then there was this. This was part of. This was a piece probably from an uh, altar set, altar vessel. Uh, rather nice, big piece with these uh, applied handles. Uh, as you can see, there's some. There's some. Uh, this was probably had other little bases that went with it. But this, this type of vase had these handles were usually always removable. And here it is. And they have these holes, and they put these wooden pins through them to hold the handles in place once it's assembled. Because those things would snap off in a minute if you tried to move it. And there's the back of it. They were done in yellow, which would be facing the wall. 
And this brought, I think, a very reasonable price, $1,186. It was a big piece. Um, I think somebody got a, a, a nice buy on that, and the gilding was in good shape. And then last is the final Wan Lee Bowl by Arthur Potts. Yet another one, this one with the prancing horses on the waves, famous pattern, and then repeats of flowers coming around the sides. Nice big bowl. It appeared to be in very nice condition all the way around. There's the bottom of it, typical Ming uh, base. And uh, it brought $1,260. Um, he says they yeah, are near perfect, okay? So that's it for the week. If you, if you uh, enjoyed this or you like our videos, subscribe. And if you're not getting the weekly newsletter, come over to bitamount.com and sign up for it. It's free. And uh, we'll do more next week. And if you're going to an auction this weekend, uh, be careful out there. Um, the Eden, I notice, has got another sale coming up. We're going to talk about that a little bit. They, they, they seem to have found another amazing collection of very, very rare Ming pieces. Um, probably in a container down on a dock somewhere. But at any rate, thanks for visiting, and um, we'll talk to you all soon. Bye-bye. See you next week.